Hello, I'm JW, and this time looking at AFDDs again, and we're going to have a look at that Eaton device uh, once again, which is that uh, thing we've looked at in the uh, first part of this series. And uh, as you may remember from that one, it was uh, extremely difficult to get the thing to trip, even when we caused some deliberate arcing with uh, various loads. So I'm going to have another go at that. And we're also going to have a look at the over voltage part of it, because according to the instructions supplied, then it will trip if the voltage is too high, more than 270 volts in the case of the one we've got. So let's go and have a go at that in the other workshop. Now let's have a go with the over voltage thing on this one. So what I've got here then is the uh, voltage we displayed here, I'm just plugging into the outlet here, so it's between line and neutral, and that comes from the top of the device. Now uh, the bottom of the device, I've just put this thinner black lead in for the moment, disconnected that uh, fat one we had before. And this actually goes across here to the uh, variac. Now this actually goes up to 270, and this thing's supposed to trip over 270, so I've also put this other yellow transformer in the back here, and that will uh, boost that up a bit further. That's basically it's no, uh, no load on that, it'll be higher on the output than it should be. So we're just going to uh, turn the voltage up. I've set this in the region of about 230 already, so obviously I'm just point starting at zero. So if we go back to this one, now if we uh, just turn on the device here, and uh, we can then just turn on the Variac here. And we can see the uh, green light is on there for normal operation, and it went through its colour sequence there as well. So currently the voltage is about 227, and this is just the frequency of 50 hertz, obviously, as uh, would expect. So uh, let's turn up the voltage and see what we get. So uh, let's turn the knob here. And we see that just increasing away there. Now 252 there, that's roughly the absolute maximum that you would want in the UK. So around 253, so anything above this is uh, more than you would normally be expecting to get. So uh, let's continue increasing. So it's 266 there, so that's way over the maximum for the UK. So that's around the 270 there. So uh, now we're into the uh, way over the 270, so 275, and we're still increasing. And now we're up to 280. And that's actually 283, and that's actually as far as the adjustment will go. But the uh, device is still on, so uh, clearly it does not trip at 270. And unfortunately we can't actually go up any higher than this. Let's say this way it goes up to 270, and then that transformer there adds another sort of 10 to 15 volts or so when uh, plugged in there without any load on it. So um, there you have it. So it certainly doesn't seem to uh, trip at 283. And bearing in mind, 280 odd volts is the point where stuff is going to likely be damaged. Bearing in mind, that's uh, 30 volts more than the maximum allowed in the UK, so around 253. So uh, yeah, it's a bit of a uh, fail there. And so it's still actually turned on, so we uh, turn the thing off, and obviously the voltage on that one has gone to off, so will it actually turn on with a voltage that high? And the answer is yes it does, so it just sits there working as normal, so uh, that's fairly disappointing. So let's just uh, turn that back down to uh, the 240 mark. Now this test will see how much power this thing actually uses, because uh, Although this is a circuit breaker, it has a load of electronics inside and also this LED indicator here. So even when it's turned on with nothing connected to the output, clearly it is going to use a certain amount of power. So I really want that to be as small as possible because this is, of course, going to be turned on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So even a small amount of power there could add up fairly significantly. So we've got the uh, power meter here and we've just got the uh, plug in the back here, just goes into the bottom there. So let's see what we've got and there's no load attached. That's basically the socket with nothing in it. So uh, let's just turn this on, and it's off at the moment, so we should of course see uh, zero, which we do. So all we've got at the moment then is just the voltage here, which is about 241 at the moment, fairly typical for the UK. And I've also set in here for 24 hours a day, and the price of electricity being 12 pence per kilowatt hour. So when this is on, it will also tell us the annual cost of this thing being left on, as well as the other information. So let's just turn on and see what we get. So the device is on, and we can see here that the power consumption is 0.84 watts, power factor is about 0.7, and uh, in terms of uh, usage per year, that's going to equate to in the region of uh, 7.4 kilowatt hours per year, 
but at 12 pence is around 89 pence per year. So not a huge amount of power, but certainly uh, something that is notable. And of course, most of that uh, 0.8 watts will be displaced in the device as heat. Not that that's going to be a huge amount, but certainly uh, something to consider. So uh, 89 pence a year, and that's, let's say, 12 pence per unit. And of course, if you had a whole rack of these things, then uh, obviously that's multiplied by however many you would actually have. Now for this setup we've got uh, what is effectively a loose connection and uh, it's on the line conductor here, this brown one. So we've got the same thing as before, power coming at the bottom, it supplies this socket, this is the black cable here from the socket, and it goes to these two here. Now the neutral one here is securely fixed on both sides, so no problems with that. But the uh, line here, as you can see, not tightened up at all, so that's there your loose connection, so uh, that can obviously arc and spark and do whatever it needs to do. And the load in this case, we're going to use a small load, which is going to be this filament lamp here. Fairly uh, old style, but this is a 40 watt lamp. And that with the load just coming off of this orange flex. And there is a lot of orange flex, just happens to be a fairly lengthy one. It's used for other purposes. So what we'll do is just turn on and then we're going to simply move this uh, black wire here, which of course will uh, hopefully get a bit of sparking or arcing there and therefore that's going to be our faulty or loose connection there. So uh, let's see what happens. So things on with the green light as expected, and we'll start with that shoved in fairly well. And unexpectedly the light of course turns on, so that's uh, all is well. So let's try uh, moving this and see uh, what we can get, if anything. Well, I've just turned it off there because uh, I've been trying this for the best part of 10 minutes and uh, nothing has tripped off despite the uh, fair amount of uh, sparking going on with this obviously loose and falling apart connection. So uh, that is also a fail. Now let's try that again. I've just removed that uh, pin from the end of the wire there. So basically just got some bare strands which may be a bit more uh, arcing and sparking. So. Uh, so they're not sort of attached in any way, so hopefully that might be uh, slightly more effective. So we'll again try that, this side secure, this side of course uh, flapping in the breeze, so let's see what we get that time. So as before the light's on.
Well, that's been going on for uh, again the best part of 10 minutes, and uh, as you can see, despite a fair amount of sparking arcing there, some of which was actually visible on that connector, then uh, nothing has actually tripped. So uh, once again, these things seem to be incredibly difficult to get to trip with any kind of uh, sparking going on. So uh, not particularly uh, inclusive there as to whether these things actually work or not. And bearing in mind, although this is a low load of a filament lamp there, most loads that apply to uh, circuits in the domestic environment are going to be in the low region because things like side lamps or whatever, phone chargers and all that kind of other stuff, you're not talking about plugging in things which are going to use sort of three or four kilowatts or something. So uh, yeah, it's a low load, but again, that's not entirely unsurprising because say most stuff generally is. And even if you consider say a lighting circuit in your house, they're only going to be rated in the UK to around six amps at most. And most of the time, even though it's rated to 6 amps, the actual current flowing is going to be extremely small, particularly of course with the advent of LED lamps and whatever, because this say is an old filament one, 40 watts, but if that was an LED, you'd probably be only looking in the region of 4 or 5 watts. Now this third attempt we've got here are literally just the two bare wire ends, so uh, various fraying bits there, I haven't actually been uh, particularly careful at stripping those, so should obviously get a good amount of arcing and whatever between those. So. Uh, Let's have a go with that. So, just turn on again. And it's the same 40 watt lamp as we had before. Well, once again, does something uh, seems to really happen there. So, uh, as with the other two, there's a fair bit of sparking going on there. It really doesn't achieve a whole lot. So, uh, fairly uh, unsuccessful once again. And so this would represent the uh, situation where you had a wire which had been broken or damaged, and therefore was sort of arcing between the two ends of it. And uh, so no uh, tripping off there either. Now another question which was asked in the comments on the previous video was what happens if you use a uh, drill or something similar with a brushed motor. Now this is the only actual drill I've got which is both 240 volts and also has that style of motor because of course a lot of things now are of course battery powered and they have uh, different types of motors in which don't actually have the sparking brushes in but uh, we have got this one so let's just plug in here and uh, this one you can probably see the uh, vents at the back there, and this is the kind that when it runs, sparks are visible. So uh, what we'll do is just turn it on. We can safely say that uh, it doesn't trip this device, but uh, on the other hand, neither does much else it would seem. So uh, certainly doesn't uh, cause it to trip, but uh, whether that's really proving anything is another story. So as before, it's incredibly difficult to get these things to trip, and in the say the segments there, it was about 10 minutes uh, for each one. Obviously, I cut out a fair bit of the uh, actual time there, so that's uh, in total around half an hour of uh, trying to get the thing to trip by using various uh, faulty connections and whatever, and say so it didn't actually trip it a single time throughout all of that, so that's uh, fairly disappointing. Now uh, next time we'll have a look at the actual regulations which uh, pertain to these devices, and also some of the uh, nonsense which has been put out by various manufacturers of these things, uh, including where they've uh, basically taken uh, certain regulations and added their own suggestions to them. But until then, thanks for watching.